on July 23, 2009. At Guarulhos International Airport in Sao Paulo, a fully armed Brazilian police was hiding near the arrivals hall. Niche agents and Mr. K also joined the scene. Joe Bong Hang's name could not be found on the scheduled passenger list. Mr. K took out his cell phone and pretended to contact Joe Bong Hang. Delaying the evacuation of the Brazilian police, and Joe Bong Hang appeared two hours later. You might think who is this man living in Suriname from the late 90s to the early 2000s. He was running a large drug trafficking organization. And was arrested in 2009 by the Niche, the US Drug Enforcement Administration, and the Brazilian police. In 2011, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison and a 100 million one fine. But first, thanks to everybody who subscribed in the last days and weeks. You are the best. Hi this is History Recaps. And you might have seen the latest Netflix hit Narco Saints. But this is the real story. The drug king of Korea. And if you don't know. Now you know. Cho Bong Hang was originally a refrigerator dealer in the 1980s. At the time, he lived in Suriname for about eight years and was bright on the local situation. In May 1994, when he was wanted on suspicion of a $1 billion fraud related to the construction of a new villa, he fled to Suriname, a country that South Korean police were difficult to investigate and familiar with. He then acquired Suri Namese nationality in 1995 and set up a fish processing plant. In reality, however, the main source of income was the trafficking of tax-free oil, which was provided tax-free to fishing companies, for money. Cho also worked in the business of employing Chinese people in factories and smuggling them into the United States and Europe. But as rising oil prices and tightening crackdowns led to a decline in imports and a disruption to business, they began to look for other sources of income. Drugs. He partnered with the largest drug cartel organization in South America, the Cali Cartel, to run a drug business. Thanks to his long life in Suriname, the business quickly flourished, and the Surinamese high-ranking politicians, bureaucrats, and military officials also developed strong relationships. Even Desi Buters, the president of Suriname, who had a long-standing acquaintance, suggests how great his connections were in Suriname. With this immense power, Cho Bong Hang was able to obtain a list of Asian passengers entering Suriname. He recruited local Koreans and sent them to the country. He then used the South Korean people as a drug carriers. With a proposal to giving them a compensation of about 4 million Korean won, which would have been around $3,600. If they transported the drugs handed over by Cho Bong Hang from South America to Europe. Most of these carriers were housewives, college students and regular looking people. But those who carried the drugs of the Cho Bong Hang without knowing the circumstances were arrested or detained locally on suspicion of carrying drugs. Cho Bong Hang's drug business spread around the world, and in 2005 he was placed on the Interpol wanted list. Cho was then engaged in a drug trade with Japan and was even planning to supply drugs to South Korea. The Niche National Intelligence Service or the Korean FBI and prosecutors received the news and made plans for Cho Bong Hang's arrest in October 2007. But there was no way to do it. Suriname and the Republic of Korea have diplomatic relations, but there is no local embassy and the relevant work was done by the Korean embassy in Venezuela. In addition, the Surinamese police and military organizations were bribed by Cho Bong Hang, so it was difficult to expect easy cooperation. Mr. K. However, an unexpected figure appeared, and it was Mr. K. Mr. K was a man who went to prison because of Joe Bong Hang while doing business in Suriname. Upon receiving this information, the niche asked Mr. K to cooperate, and although it was a dangerous matter that might cost his life. After a long period of consideration, Mr. K accepts the cooperation of the niche agency. Here's how the niche and the DEA came up with it. DEA Drug Enforcement Administration the idea was to disguise Mr. K as a drug broker between a fictional Korean-American drug dealer and Joe Bong Hang and approach him. Mr. K lived in the same house with Mr. Joe Bong Hang and several of Mr. Joe's men. Mr. K only contacted the National Intelligence Service at specific times to maintain confidentiality, and he slept with a pistol when he slept. Then one day, Joe Bong Hang's Korean subordinate, Mr. A, discovered Mr. K's identity. Mr. K persuaded Mr. A by saying, you also have a family in Korea, so you can't live like this, hold hands with me and do something good. 
and Mr. K also connected Mr. A with the National Intelligence Service. Mr. A shed tears and promised cooperation. Life crisis. However, three days later, Joe Bong Hang's secondary appeared at Mr. K house. He was betrayed by A. Mr. K was on the verge of being killed, but he asked to call Joe Bong Hang. Joe Bong Hang appeared with a cold smile. At this time, Mr. K said, Mr. A talks a lot, so I played a bit of a joke. If you don't believe me, do whatever you want. In the end, Joe Bong Hang removed his suspicions about Mr. K, and Mr. A was pushed to the back of the organization. Rest Operation In early 2008, Mr. K, the National Intelligence Service, and the DEA launched a joint operation to arrest Mr. Cho. In September 2008, Mr. K asked Cho Bong Hang to look at the drugs he was going to trade directly. Cho Bong Hang took Mr. K into the car, covered Mr. K's face with a mask, and took him to a warehouse. In the warehouse, 1.2 tons of cocaine to be sent to Korea were piled up, with a transaction price of more than 1 trillion won, which would be around $725 million. Mr. K, who had been in the local area for about two years and had identified the route and identity of the warehouse by the casino, club lights, and the direction of the car's movement, requested the niche to raid the warehouse and arrest Mr. Cho. However, the DEA side expressed reluctance to carry out the operation due to fears of a large-scale gunfight with drug gang members armed with AK weapons and loss of life. In the end, the local arrest operation failed. Joe Bong Hang Arrest Operation Mr. K was threatened with his personal life as this operation failed and returned to Korea in September 2008. After returning home, the niche, DEA, and Mr. K devised a plan to lure Joe Bong Hang out of Suriname and arrest him. The first planned place was Guam. Mr. K made a transaction with Joe Bong Hang and told him that an American drug dealer wanted to buy 1.2 tons of cocaine, and the amount and method of remittance were to be decided upon meeting. It was a great deal for Joe Bong Hang and he accepts the offer. With the big deal close in front of him, Joe Bong Hang hurriedly started to hide cocaine and wood for export. Joe Bong Hang asked Mr. K to come to Suriname with the buyer, but Mr. K refused on the excuse that the buyer was reluctant to enter the country because he was concerned about the security of Suriname. Then, he asked Joe Bong Hang to come to Guam and talk to him, but there was no way for the drug trafficker to go to the land of his American partner. Eventually, the contact point was changed to Brazil, where extradition is possible and cooperation with law enforcement is possible. At first, it was decided to meet in Belém, a city close to Suriname, but there was a high probability that the arrest operation would fail due to the influence of a local drug organization in Belém. Again, the contact point was changed to Sao Paulo. Joe Bong Hang, who was suspicious of Mr. K's continued refusal to enter Suriname and the change of contact point, eventually refused the transaction. The end of the drug lord. Unable to give up arresting Joe Bong Hang, Mr. K continued to persuade Joe Bong Hang. A long time has passed, and in the end, Joe Bong Hang accepts the deal. On July 23, 2009, at Guarulhos International Airport in Sao Paulo, a fully armed Brazilian police officer was hiding near the arrivals hall. Niche agents and Mr. K also joined the scene. 5 p.m. However, Joe Bong Hang did not appear at the promised time. Also, Joe Bong Hang's name could not be found on the scheduled passenger list. Mr. K took out his cell phone and pretended to contact Joe Bong Hang, delaying the evacuation of the Brazilian police, and Joe Bong Hang appeared two hours later. It was the end of the Korean drug lord who refused to come out of Suriname for a long time. After that, Joe Bong Hang was extradited to South Korea and sentenced to 10 years in prison and a fine of 100 million won at the first trial. Digression. Despite the fact that Korean nationals run a large-scale drug organization that beats up all kinds of drug offenders abroad, and a huge amount of time was invested in the arrest operation, there was controversy over the narrow punishment of 10 years in prison and a fine of 100 million won. Director Yoon Jong-bin, who directed Gundo, Age of Rebellion, Duke and other amazing movies, will direct the Netflix drama or Narco Saints with this incident as the background. Joe Bong Hang is played by Huang Young Min as Joan Yo Huan, and Ha Jung Woo as Kang and Gu as Mr. K. If you like this video please subscribe, like and hit the bell.